Hi folks, this is James from James Reviews here, and today my interview guest will be Justin McMillan, the director of the new Australian psychological horror film Sweet River, which is streaming exclusively on Netflix right now. Hi Justin, how are you mate? Hey good buddy, how are you? Good, thanks. Uh, so you've come over from a documentary filmmaking background. What would you say is the biggest challenge that you faced moving from documentary filmmaking over to narrative feature filmmaking? The money to make a film and, and the effort and everything that's in and around it requires, like I don't, I don't think first time filmmakers get a shot unless yes. you go and make your own film, basically. Yeah. I think you'd have to be pretty bloody lucky to be attached to you know, a, a solid script with a with a solid amount of money. Yeah. Um, having having not done one before. So now that you've directed both a documentary film and a narrative feature film, do you have a preference between the two? I just I was always after becoming a, a narrative feature filmmaker, okay. and um, that's what I wanted to do. I love the idea of going back to documentary um, every now and then. I think I think that's um, that's something that. You know, if, if it worked out that way, that that would be fun and the right subject matter to do it. So as well as directing the film, you also wrote the story for Sweet River. What was your inspiration behind the story there? I'd executed a, um, a short film for the Australian Federal Police for International Missing Children's Day. And okay. I just, I don't know, like as a father of three, it was something that really scared me. Um, and I thought if I was going to make a really scary film, make a film about what scares you the most okay yeah um so i just started just started farming that area you know and then um, the whole supernatural thing kind of crept into it because i wanted it to be more than just a missing child yeah kind absolutely of case yeah. that we've all seen so many times you know yeah. so oh okay cool yeah so you must obviously be a horror uh, movie fan yourself do you have any favourite horror films or favourite horror movie directors that may have influenced your style? Yeah, I did. I like. I mean, I watched as many like all the classics, all the horror films growing up and stuff. But yeah. as I got older, I sort of didn't really like. I just didn't really rate them that much. Like I, yeah. I did. I there was some really good scares in a couple of films, and I was like, oh, okay, I can see why people are getting into it because it, it it gets it gets the juice just going. You know. It, kind of it isn't just a typical story experience but yeah. I, I i've been more cerebral i guess like as i've got as i've aged and i've kind of like i've wanted something more than just a scare i've, I've wanted something emotional and something um that was a little bit more thought provoking and when i saw um a quiet place mm. that was what that's what did it for me I, right. I just i just was like wow i was like okay this is this is just a film about um, two parents trying to keep their kids alive yes. done in a really beautiful way and scary as all hell, but um, so beautiful, so intelligent and um, just not trying to be anything more than what it was. And I just loved everything about it and that really inspired me to kind of go, okay, well, if that's what, uh, if that's what's, achievable um in in this category then i want to get as close as i can to that with with the money and the time that i've got yes and that, that was my motivation my influence for okay. sure sounds good yeah well the mainstream horrors these days they're generally not that great and like you said the ones that have sort of that uh, emotional aspect and that cerebral aspect they're definitely a lot scarier and yeah and i think probably like the biggest fear the, the scariest thing about sweet river for me is that is that the pain that you feel of that woman who's lost a child and what it's yes. done to her life? Like you can see that it's just destroyed her, yes. and that's really scary. You know, like that. I mean, having a child, um, and and it's like anyway. I guess anyone that's really close to you, a loved one, that that fear of losing that loved one is is something that is universal, and we all have that. We all have that fear, and I think this film just brings that to the surface and presents it to the audience in a really interesting way. So I like that. I like that about the story. Yes, definitely. Uh, the film tackles some heavy themes such as dealing with the loss of a loved one, 
and grief and how people cope with it. Uh, what was the mood like on the set and especially when filming those more emotionally dramatic scenes? There's one thing that you can say about like great actors just, um, they just exude an energy that just takes over the set. And I typically like a quiet set and everybody was, was pretty respectful to that. And you know, a really experienced crew. I was so fortunate to have them all, but as soon as an actor goes to that place that, um, you know, you can tell that they're drawing on their own personal mm. pain um, to get themselves into that position. And, you know, just what that does to a crew, it, it's a pretty unique experience to be watching something firsthand um, executed in a really thought-provoking way by, by, an, by an artist um, yeah. who's honed, honed their craft for for years and years and years and you've got a front seat to that. I think it's, I think it's an honor, you know, and it just, just holds everybody in that position. And I think, you know, after a couple of those heavy emotional scenes in this film, I think we all knew we had something here, you know, and and it inspires me to want to just, you know, try harder and and do better because, because everyone else is bringing it, you know, if actors are bringing it, everyone brings it. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. Yeah, it's definitely very authentic and they um, they really draw you in with their performances, which is great. So I'm curious to know about how Netflix became involved with the picture and how they secured distribution rights. Was it a type of a pitching process? Yeah. Or perhaps another a, way they discovered the process. Film? And um, it's, it's tricky. Um, and we were just very lucky that they really liked the film. And um, I think Australian films are... Um, you know, I guess in that world now where it's it, it, there's so much, there was so much content for everyone to choose from. Yes, didn't want to make a cliche Australian film. This didn't have that look to it. Um, you know, the performances are there, the aesthetics there. Um, it it's it, I think it was something that they were just keen to get behind, and um, I'm so lucky they did, and um, I'm so glad they did. <laughs> yeah, okay, and. Uh, it just just feels like um, you know if, uh, it, 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 if if they're showing support for projects like this, it, it's a it's a really good thing for for everybody that's in the industry and having yes. a crack at getting their work out there. So just going into slight spoiler territory now, and anyone that's seen the film would have noticed the use of uh, prominent red lights. And I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the significance of that for us. It's tricky because it, it it's the the, ch- the the children from the bus crash, their eyes were, um, when they'd come back, they'd come back with this red, red eye yes. and, it, and it became a, um, yeah, basically like a, a, a repellent. So anyone with red, uh, red light would, to keep the kids away, you just put red right. lights yes, okay. around. So that, that was it. But I, yeah. I don't know, we'd sort of buried it deep in there and I was kind of keen to make it a bit more explicit and, a few people had sort of said, "Nah, don't worry about it. You don't, mm. you don't need it." But, but um, turns out we did. <laughs> yeah, no, look, well, that's, um, I, that's what I thought because I, I noticed whenever you had that, and obviously the sure. the characters were walking around with the torch, and any time the, the light was shining, there were you couldn't see the kids at all. So that's what I assumed. Yeah. But I just thought I'd pick your brain. Yeah, you a little were bit. right. Yeah, okay, cool. You were right. I wanted <laughs> yeah. to make it a little bit more explicit, as I said, but yeah, I got, I got told not to because. I just didn't want to ram it down the audience. No. Throat, but, um, yeah, it's better. It's, but, yeah. it's better that way because it's you want to keep it a little bit open to interpretation as well. And yeah, so. absolutely. Great, Justin. Thanks a lot for your time. It was really nice chatting with you, and I really enjoyed the film. It was really well produced and directed, and I hope a lot of people see it and spread the word. And I look forward to chatting with you after your next project. Thanks, Nick. I really appreciate yeah. it, mate. And um, yeah. Fingers crossed we get to talk again on the next one. That's it, mate. Thanks, Justin. Thanks for your time, buddy. No worries, Nick. Take care. See you, mate. Bye. See you, mate. Bye.